Thank you for coming for my talk, to my talk. Uh, this is about replica types, a new feature added in Solar 7. Um, this is the agenda for my talk. Uh, first, for context and history, maybe we're going to start talking about scaling in Solar, how it was before Solar Cloud, uh, how it is in Solar Cloud, um, why or what things are we trying to address with uh, replica types, um, then wi which replica types were added, then um, one of the use cases that you can achieve with replica types, which is having some sort of master-slave architecture in Solar Cloud. Um, then how to use them and some to do some future work or think things that needs to be done or that can be done. Yeah, so before, before Solar Cloud, before Solar 4, the way to scale Solar was by doing a master-slave architecture where all the updates would go to the master and all the queries would go to the slave. Then in the background, the, the slave would be doing a segment replication and copying the latest updates from the master to the slave. Um, this, works, this, um, this works pretty well to some extent. Uh, it has some issues. Um, before I go into that, um, just some key concepts required to understand segment replication. Uh, Solar is built on top of Apache Lucene. Uh, most people already know that. Um, the way Solar stores, Lucene stores the index is by writing segments. As you continue adding documents to Solar um, uh, to, or to Lucene, um, it will, as, um, every time you open a new searcher or you do a commit or um, every time the memory buffer fills, it's going to write a new segment to disk. And the, the important part is that that segment, once it's written, it never, it never changes. Okay? There's going to be another thread that's going to be choosing segments and merging them, merging those, creating a new, bigger segment, and then dropping the old ones. So Solar uses um, this uh, characteristic of the Lucene indexing to, to perform segment replication. And the way it works is that um, the slave server is going to ask the master, hey, which segments do you have? Uh, the master is going to explain, to say, hey, I have segments. In this case, for example, it will say I have segment one, two, and three. Uh, the slave is going to compare the segments that the master has versus uh, what, what it itself has and um, download only the updated, the new segments. And since, um, since it knows that the um, segment one and two didn't change, it doesn't need to download it again. Uh, this strategy does not support uh, near real time, so you cannot open a, a near real time structure on top of, uh, of those segments. Until, so you need to hard commit, get the, get the latest segments, and then open a searcher, and that's when it's uh, available for search. So this worked very well. It has some issues. Uh, a lot of uh, all the configuration for master slave before Solar Cloud was manual. Uh, you had to specify who was the master, who was the slave. Uh, also, um, there was no high availability for writes. So if the master goes down, the update would fail. The good thing is that the queries would uh, still succeed. And then you would have to go fix that master or add some other node to become a master. But that, again, is manual work. So then with Solar 4, Solar Cloud came. Um, Solar Cloud is essentially just a set of features of, or capabilities added to Solar uh, to have high availability. Uh, no recovery, uh, no discovery, automatic load balancing, all those things. Um, one of the main features added to Solar Cloud was distributed indexing. So um, you don't know, no longer needed this segment replication in order to uh, send the documents to the different replicas of a particular shard. The way it works with distributed indexing is that uh, when a user adds a document, it will go to the leader. If the leader doesn't receive it immediately, whoever receives that document is going to send it to the leader. And then the leader is going to add that document locally and then send it to all the replicas of the shard, all the followers. Each of those uh, replicas are going to add the document locally and then respond to the, to the leader. And then the leader will respond to the user, we have your document. The good thing about this strategy is that now this supports near real time get. Uh, sorry, near real time. Uh, so those, those replicas, they can open a searcher, and since they have every, all the documents, they can provide search for all, all the latest documents that it received. Another big feature added to Solar Cloud was the transaction log. The transaction log is a Solar file that um, essentially it contains all the documents updated since the last commit. Um, and this, this file is needed for, uh, for real time get, and it's also needed for recovery. 
Uh, and also, another feature was self-recovery of nodes, right? So what happens if in this situation where we had um, the distributed indexing, um, as I was explaining before, before, but in this case, the Replica 2, for whatever reason, couldn't respond to the update, for example, because it was either uh, with some network issue, or the replica was down, or um, there was some garbage collection, or whatever reason, it just can't respond to the leader. What's going to happen is that yeah, replica one is going to proceed the same way, and the leader is going to um, tell that replica that it needs to recover okay, in some way. Um, so that replica is missing data, and essentially it can't, uh, now that it's going to, to be in recovery state, it can't uh, provide search, uh, it can respond to search from users anymore. And it needs to recover. The way recovery works is that the replica, once it's back up, it notices that it's, uh, it's being put, placed in recovery. Um, so it's going to go tell the leader, hey, I'm ready. Um, uh, I need to become active again. The leader is going to start sending um, first Every new update is going to be going to this replica that's in recovery. And the replica, instead of uh, indexing that document, is going to start uh, buffering them. And at the same time, it's going to start the first phase of recovering, which is called piercing. The piercing essentially is where the replica is going to ask the leader, hey, which documents did I miss? This is the last document I got. Uh, how many did I miss? Okay. And the, the leader is going to say, oh, okay, I, am, I have already this number of documents that you don't have. Is that number? Um, is small, by default, it's less than 100, um, then the leader is going to start sending those documents individually to the replica. The replica will update those in the, in the index and then replay the, replay the buffer, and then it becomes active. But if the number of documents missing there is more than 100, or if you, if you configure that to some other number, to your particular number, the way the replica will recover is by doing uh, the same segment recovery that we were talking about in, before in Master Slave. Essentially, it will commit to the leader, it's going to start replication, it's going to download all the segments. After that, it's going to uh, replay the buffer and then become active. So if, the, if all of this works, then why do we need replica types? In Master Slave, one of the things that, um, that was interesting was that the, the indexing process and the searching process were, were separated, right? Uh, so if you had like um, expensive documents or a spike in number of updates, um, they would not affect the search, the search traffic, the search latency or throughput, or the other way around. If you have a very expensive query, uh, that would not affect the updates, right? Uh, this was not possible in Solar Cloud because now every replica does everything. So um, expensive updates will affect queries and the other way around too. Um, so one of the nice things of the distributed indexing is that it's support near real time, but some use cases don't really need near real time. Some cases are okay with uh, serving data that's uh, minutes old or I don't know uh, seconds, even um, even that may be uh, fast. Um, um, also, uh, leader initiated recovery, that like recovery state, uh, can become a problem. Let's say you have a big cluster and there's some sort of network partition and the leader tries to send the update to its, I don't know, hundreds of replicas or whatever, and one third of the, one third of the replicas are, uh, cannot respond. So all these replicas are going to go into recovery state, state, and that means that those replicas cannot serve search traffic anymore, and that may be a problem for you. Um, also, uh, like, like every replica doing everything can sometimes be wasteful. Um, so let's say if you have a three node cluster, uh, a, a three replica shard, then you may, be, you, you may want that every replica has everything. Every replica can be leader and they have all the updates. But if you have a 50 replica shard, um, that may not be needed. You may not need that the 50, the 50 replicas are doing everything. Um, also, in um, that recovery that I was showing uh, with the piercing and the segment replication, um, with uh, uh, cases with high update throughput, the piercing has uh, little chance of succeeding because um, if it is like 100 documents, which is the default, 100 documents may be a second or two of garbage, like slow garbage collection can, can, uh, can cause this, right? Um, and then, especially like, again in high, up, high indexing throughput cases, the number of segments that the replica needs to download may be too many because it changes all the time, right? Um, and this problem can happen in, um, when recovering, doing a segment replication. So I showed you before how in Master Slave, the, the replication is somewhat incremental. Only the new 
segment files are downloaded. But let's think about this case where you have three nodes, uh, A, B, and C. A is the leader, and C is in recovery. Let's assume for now that the, that the piercing fails. Uh, so uh, node C is going to go and say to the leader, hey, which, uh, which segments do I need to download? And the leader is going to say, oh, you, I have segments A1 and A2. Node C is going to say, OK, I have segment C1. And then um, node A is going to say, no, uh, that's fine. Uh, you don't need that one. Throw it away. Download A A1 and A2. So essentially, it's doing a full segment, a full index replication. Uh, OK, that it did. Uh, node C is active now. Um, it's working. Some time passes, and then it goes into recovery again. But now the leader is node B. There was a leader change. And node B has its own segments, because every, every replica guy is adding, is indexing locally, is merging locally. So each, each replica would have its own segments, right? Um, so node B, uh, so node C is going to go to the leader and say, hey, who, uh, which segments do I need? And node B is going to say, you need B1, B2, and B3. OK, I have A1 and A2. Throw those away. Just download the full index again. Um, yeah, and this, this can be a problem. So to address some of these issues, we added replica types. Three types of replicas uh, were added. Uh, NRT, that stands for near real time. T log, that stands for transaction log, and pool, because it pulls indices. NRT replicas is not really a new type. This is essentially the name that we gave to the existing types in Solar Cloud. And this is exactly the same. Uh, it will do the, the replication the same. It will handle the updates the same way that um, it was doing before. There's no change. Again, this is the replica that existed today. When a document is added, the leader is going to add it locally, update the transaction log, send it to all the near real-time replicas, and then they are going to index the document, uh, update the transaction log, and respond and then respond to the user. So for now, let's not think about what type of replica the leader is in this case. Let's just think about the replica on the right. Um, yeah, so near real-time replicas, they support everything that Solar Cloud supports today. They support soft commits. They support real-time gets. They can become leaders. Uh, the this, the T-Log replica is one of the new types added. And essentially, it works, it works very similar to near real-time. The difference is that when a T-Log replica receives an update, it will update the transaction log, but it won't update the index. Okay? It will respond to the leader, I have the document. But it won't be available for search until the T-Log replica will do a periodic replication from the leader. Okay? Um, so essentially, the T-Log will, will continuously do um, replication. And it will only update the transaction log whenever an update is received. Uh, because it works like this, T-log replicas do not support near real time. Uh, and they also do not support real time gets. The third type of replica is pool replicas. The pool replicas are slightly different, because what they do is that they don't even receive updates from the leader. The only, the only thing they do is like a periodic replication, the same replication that the T-logs do, and the same replication that master slave used to do. Um, so um, pool replicas cannot support uh, soft commits, do not support real-time gets, and they actually cannot become leaders because uh, they, are missing, they don't have all the latest data. So why are they good for? Essentially, uh, the, the best thing about the, the pool replicas is that they cannot go into leader-initiated recovery. So because the leader is not trying to contact them for updates, uh, that replica is not going to be placed in recovery, even if there is some sort of network issue between the leader and the replica. As long as the, rep as the pool replica is still connected to Zookeeper, it's going to remain active. Um, that means, of course, that it can become out of date. So it could be if, if, this, if this problem between the leader and the pool replica remains there for a long time, pool replica could be serving all, uh, all data for some time. So in summary, uh, near real-time replicas, they write to the index, they write to the transaction log, they receive every update, and they replicate periodically. Uh, sorry, and they do not replicate periodically. Uh, T-log replicas do not write to the index, they do write the transaction log, they receive every update, and they replicate periodically. And see how there's an asterisk in the uh, T-log doesn't write to the index. And the reason for this is that when the T-log replica becomes leader, it will behave exactly as a near real time. So it will, the, the T-log replica that is leader is going to write to the index, okay? so that everyone, every other T-log replica can replicate from. Uh, pool replicas 
do not write to the index, do not write to the transaction log. They, receive, they do not receive every update, and they replicate periodically from the leader. So to show the data flow again, let's say you have uh, these two, log, uh, two T log replicas and a uh, pool replica. When an update is received, it will go to the index and the transaction log of node A, which again is a T log replica, but because it's a leader, it's indexing. Uh, it will go to the transaction log of all the node uh, of all the other T log replicas, and then the index is going to be replicated for all the T log or pool replicas. Um, so what do they support? Uh, near real-time replica, again, it supports everything that Solar Cloud supports right now. Soft commits, real-time gets, they can become leader, and they can go into leader-initiated recovery. T-log replicas do not support soft commits, do not support real-time gets. Again, there's an asterisk here. Uh, they can become the leader. by apply So when a T-log replica needs to become a leader, it essentially it will apply everything that's in the transaction log, and it's, it has the most rec recent data. And they can go into leader-initiated recovery. And again, the asterisk here is because uh, does not support real-time get as long as you are not the leader. If you are the T-log and you're the leader and you do a real-time get, it will respond. And pull replicas do not support soft commits. They do not support real-time get. They cannot become leaders, but they can also not go into, uh, they can't go, go to leader-initiated recovery. Yeah, so now when you create a collection in Solar, you can specify the number of replicas that you want of each type, like, right? Or when you are at a shard. But not all the combinations of replica types are supported or recommended. These are the, the, the recommendations uh, for combinations of replica types. First, it's all near real time. Uh, that, again, this is the default. Uh, this is existing before 7. And if you don't specify replica types, it's going to go into this configuration. Uh, and this is the only configuration that would support near real time. Uh, and it's otherwise, it's also recommended for small to medium clusters or when uh, the indexing throughput is not too high. Uh, you can also choose to have all T-log replicas. And um, you would use this combination when there's no need for near real time, when there's high update throughput, or when um, there's a medium to high, uh, medium to big cluster. But you still want every replica to have every document. And then a set of T-log plus a set of pool replicas is also a good combi uh, combination. And you would use it when you don't need near real time, when the update uh, throughput is high, um, when from medium or to big uh, clusters or with um, high, th or high throughput, but uh, also where you prefer search availability over near real time or consistency. These last uh, two um, combinations also have a Another benefit is that that issue with recovery that I was mentioning before is not a problem anymore. Because um, let's go to that example again. But now let's think about node A and node B being T log replicas, and node C being either T log or a pool replica in recovery. So, um, yeah, the, the node C is going to ask the leader hey, which segments do we have? I have segments A1 and A2. OK, I'll download that. But see how, in this case, node B has. Um, also in segments A1 and A2, because it's essentially also replicating all the time. And then uh, node C is not very reliable, and it will go to recovery again. And in this case, the leader is uh, node B. Uh, but node B has uh, segment A1, A2, and B3. And so segments A1 and A2 are already in node, in node C, so it doesn't need to copy those. So it, it's back to being incremental in that sense. Um, a couple of combinations that I didn't mention in the recommended ones are um, near real time with either T-log or pool replicas, or all pool replicas. So that issue with the recovery that I mentioned before, it becomes much worse in, in, if you mix near real time with pool replicas or T-log replicas, because it doesn't even need to go to a node doesn't even need to go to recovery. It's replicating per periodically from the leader. If the leader changes, that means that all the pool or T-log replicas that you have out there, in the next replication phase, they're going to download the full index. So you have to be very careful. And all pool replicas, because, um, because pool replicas cannot be leaders, if you have all pool replicas, you essentially have a leaderless shard. And this actually is a combination that is not supported. So if you try to create it, Solar is going to complain. So. I mentioned in the agenda that one of the fe nice features that you could have by using combinations of replica types is a master-slave uh, architecture in Solar Cloud. 
and it's very easy to think about how to do it. You just need to have a tlog replica that's going to be the leader, and then a bunch of pull replicas to do queries from. And you can do even better now. You can have a set of tlog replicas that uh, are going to be writing, and then a set of pull replicas for queries, right? And you get uh, the benefits of Solar Cloud. So if the leader goes down, now you automatically get a leader, uh, leader election. Another node is going to become a leader, and then the replication is going to continue, and you won't even notice from the search or from, uh, in the updates. You may have a small bleep, but then uh, it will continue to work automatically. Um, so you get, um, you get to prefer search availability over uh, consistency or near real time by using something like this. Um, you get to do that separation of responsibility that was good in, in Master Slave. Um, but you also get most of the benefits of Solar Cloud. You have high, avail high availability of rights, load balancing, um, node recovery, and, uh, and most of the Solar Cloud features. Um, and this also, of course, uh, I'm, I'm showing it as a single index, but essentially, you, since you can have multiple collections or multiple uh, shards for a collection, you can. Um, you, you could use auto-scaling groups so that some, some nodes only get T-log replicas and some other nodes only get pool replicas, and that gives you that separation of responsibility uh, completely, right? Because if you have multiple shards and then in a node you have the leader of one and then, and then pool replicas, they, there's still no separation because if there is a spike in updates, they're probably going to go to all the shards and then um, you, you wouldn't get that separation. So you can use uh, auto-scaling rules to make sure that some types of replicas only go to some nodes and some other types to some others. So how do you use them? How do you use replica types? Um, it's actually uh, pretty easy. Um, essentially, when you create a collection or when you create a shard, you can specify um, the number of replicas for different types that you want for, um, for that shard. Also, um, when you create a replica, you can specify the type that you want. If you don't, this is backward compatible, so if you don't and you create a collection without specifying the, the types of the different number of replicas for different types, and you just say replication factor, that's going to translate automatically to near real time, which is the existing type before Solar 7. The same with add replica. If you don't specify the type, it's going to be near real time. And there's also, of course, a V2 option. Um, there's also support for SolarJ. So if you create a collections using SolarJ, then you just um, those numbers there are the number of shards, uh, number of uh, near real time replicas, T log and pull log and, and pull um, replicas. And when you create and when you add replica, you can specify the type that you want it to be. As I was saying before, you can use the auto scaling uh, policy framework so that you can choose which types of replica goes to different nodes. And the rules would look something like this. To identify the types of replica, the type a replica is, the way, the way to do this is by looking at the, at the cluster state. There, there's going to be, for each replica, uh, the, the type key that's going to tell you which type it is. And also, there's a small but very important detail that um, now when you create the collections uh, via, uh, in, via collections API, the core is going to include the type of replica it's hosting. In this case, it, it's T that stands for T-log, but it would be N for near real time or P for uh, pool. And why I think this is important, because Solar includes in the logs, uh, for the majority of the logs, it, in, it includes the core name of the, um, where, where it's logging. So you can say, ah, OK, this is a, a T-log replica. That's why it's, it's, it's logging about doing replication. That makes sense. There's, uh, I'm cheating a bit here because this is not yet committed, but um, this is in, uh, in a Jira that's um, soon to be committed by, by Rohit. And it think, uh, so there will be in the, in the UI, you would be able to see which type uh, the replicas are. Then, um, so another interesting part is that you can choose, um, you can set the preference of which replica types you want to respond for a query. So you can say, for example, in this case, I'm going to start send this query, and I want it to be responded uh, by uh, replicas of type pool. And as long as there is one, and, and, and you can set preference that's much more complicated like this. You could say first pool, and then active. And the idea is that 
we could keep we could add more rules here. Um, there's uh, you can choose also location of the replica, uh, like a, like an IP um, prefix or something like that. Um, and the idea is that this is going to sort uh, which replicas are available for a shard, and then if there is at least one that's pool and uh, is active, is going to be used for responding your query. The important part is that if there isn't one, um, that's that's um, applying to the, to this rule, then any other replica is going to be used in this case. The same way, I mean, it will default. It will it will go to the default, which is to take any replica. There's this other uh, feature that's also not committed, but soon, um, that you can use to filter types. And in this case, what you, what you want to say is that if there's, I want to query only a replica of type pool, and if it's not there, and if there's no active pool replica for a shard, just give me an error. I don't want to query any, any other replica. And the reason why this is also important is that if you're doing that master-slave uh, architecture and you don't really want to go query the leaders, you can, you can do that. So what's next to do? This is some of the stuff that I think can be done. Uh, there's more um, that people can think of. This is um, so one of the main things that came during the, the the development of this feature was that uh, issue that I mentioned before that if the pool replica cannot talk with the leader for a long time, it will continue to be serving search traffic, and that search traffic maybe 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 responding with um, very old data, right? So there's options. There's this, there's this Jira to address that. Um, the options that were discussed are either let's Let's make the replica become, go to recovery if it fails X amount of replications or if it fails for this amount of time. Another option that, that we were thinking is um, including the response, the time of the last uh, repli successful replication so that the client can choose, oh, OK, this data is way too old. I'm going to do another query. Um, another, another thing that needs to be done, I think, is that right now replication is always uh, going to happen from the leader, and that's not really necessary, because all the all the TLOG replicas and pool replicas are going to contain the same segments. the The leader will have the latest one, but if you are okay with being a little bit more more behind, you could say, okay, replicate from any TLOG replica, um, and that would, I mean, because otherwise there can be a bottleneck in the leader if everyone is trying to replicate from it. Integration with the CLI is not done. So if you use Bean Solar to create collections, you can't specify right now how many, how many replicas you want for each type. Um, so the shard preference is also only supported in the multi-shard case. It's, uh, yeah, in the, yeah, in the multi-shard case, if you have a collection with a single shard right now, it, it, won't, it, won't, um, it won't support that parameter. The reason is that if you have a single shard collection, the the code that this, that decides where where to query is in the client. So we need to we need to make sure that this code can run in the client too. Uh, there's an open Jira for that, but that that's not uh, done yet. Another thing that could be done is that, as I mentioned, you, we don't mix near real time replicas with pool or tlogs, and the the reason is that if they need to replicate from one and then um, and then there's a leader change, and, and the new leader has a completely different set of segments that, that, that would cause a um, full download of the index from, for every, every T log or pull of replica. But um, so, what we really need is that if there's near real time replicas, let's just make sure that they don't become leaders. So, if there is a use case, where for the same collection you want to do some near real-time queries, but some others are uh, are okay with having some uh, uh, stale data, um, then um, you could have a cluster where you mix all the different types. You just need to make sure that uh, the near real-time replicas do not become leaders. And yeah, this is not this is not supported right now. Another thing that would be interesting is that, as I said. Solar doesn't support near real time when doing replication, and the reason for this is because when the I think the replication was implemented way long ago, and 
soft commits did not exist then. And then with Solar Cloud, that stopped mattering because the replication was only used for recovery. But now that we're going to use replication for, um, for updating the index, um, we may want to be uh, closer, uh, like more, more real-time, right? And Lucene, actually, the replicator module, supports near real-time replication um, on, on the soft commits. But it, so that's not yet supported in Solar. That's something that could be added. And then the Tilo replicas, the pool replicas, could get uh, more up-to-date data. So yeah, that's my talk. Thank you very much. Make sure you're rooting for the right team in the World Cup. That's why I'm putting that there. Brainstorm. <laughs> Brain long read a bit. OK, I think we have time for questions. Yeah. Hi, so you mentioned small, medium, and large size clusters. What, what are they in your view? Sorry? What are small, medium, and large What do they clusters? mean? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, I don't have an answer, actually. <laughs> um, it really depends on each use case, right? Because it's, it's not a single dimension to, of big to uh, small to big. It's also the, uh, the number of replicas, the number of nodes, the traffic that you are, uh, that you are using. So I've, I've heard people using uh, T-log replicas. It's, it's much more stable even for not so big clusters. And then, um, yeah, there's people that use near real-time replicas for very big clusters and still good for them. So it's, there's no, it's, I mean, it's kind of a blurry thing that you, you will have to design with your, uh, define with your own data. Hi, uh, question about the, the T-log uh, replica. You, you said that when, uh, when the update comes in and a transaction log gets updated in T-log, it's actually not searchable yet. It's not committed until the leader initiates replication. Or what, what triggers T-log to actually make the changes searchable? Sorry, I, I didn't. Oh, it, in order to make the change searchable in the T-log. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it, it, the T-log the is actually not going to use at all unless uh, unless it needs to become a leader. So the, um, the information is not going to be searchable until a replication happens. Is there any way to trigger the replication, like force it to happen without being, becoming a leader? E yes, the, the replication or, uh, or indexing from the T-log? Index from the T-log. No, in fact, it's something that you don't want. Again, if you have more than one node writing index at any point in time, you can cause a lot of travel because anyone will have a different set of segments, and then every, everyone needs to download. Any more questions? So I'm actually trying to understand the practical use case of the pull replicas. If you can explain a little more. The practical use case of what? Of pull replicas. Yes, uh, the, main, the main use case of that is that it doesn't need to go into leader initiated recovery. So if you have a big cluster and you are afraid of losing a part of the cluster because of some blip in the network, uh, those replicas are still going to be active as long as they don't disconnect from Zookeeper. And the timeout for that is much longer than just a single update failing at a particular point in time, you know? They, yes, yes, yes. Pool replica participate in search, yes. And they are, they are in fact, that for that particular, for that thing, yes. We still have time for some more questions. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Hi, you, you've talked a lot about uh, leader-initiated recovery. Is it possible to have a replica-initiated recovery where it knows that it's out of date instead of the leader kind of? Kicking a replica-initiated <coughs> initiating recovery for what? So that it know, if it, if the replica knows it's out of date, it can go and recover as opposed to the leader initiation initiation no. recovery. No. So. The, the replica won't go into recovery automatically as long as it doesn't disconnect from Zookeeper. Any questions? So how often does the T-log replica, I think that was part of someone's question, uh, replicate from the leader who's writing the index? So right now, that's not configurable, uh, but it's set to half the auto-commit time. 
So if you the, the way to the way to configure right now is to um, set the auto commit time, and half that time is going to be used for replication. But then, if the, the, that is just how when the replication is triggered. So if you if there's really no um, strong definition of how long it's going to take to see the new data, because if for whatever reason one replication takes x amount of seconds and that's more than the near real time than the than the auto commit time the new replication is not going to start until the other one finishes so, and there could have been multiple commits on the leader during this time so eventually it will it will be there but it's not you you don't know exactly when are there any more questions okay if none Thanks, Thomas, for yeah, this talk. You.